Well, Dermot, a tremendous effort this afternoon to go down 3-1 at Spurs, but you were, you were winning for so long as well. Yeah, it's a credit to the lads. They've come to a world-class stadium against world-class players and, and pushed them, frustrated them for 75 minutes. Um, I think it's a special mention to the manager. He set them up all week and obviously COVID is the reason he's not here today, but it shows you the, the tactics and the setup and the system that we've picked today worked. Uh, it frustrated them. They had to bring on the big boys towards the end and a little bit of tired legs and, and different reasons. So we'll be disappointed we couldn't hold on. And, and obviously when you're so close to it, you think, you know what, dreams could happen. But I think overall the boys have to be proud with their performance. I was going to say, with we've, we've 16, 17 minutes to go, one nil up. Spurs hadn't really created too many chances. Do you think this could be a day? Yeah, listen, I think, I think we stopped. We, we hadn't been passing the ball as much. I think when you give them waves of attack against you, they're too good to, to do that. We have to, to pass the ball. Uh, part of the success in the first half was that we actually landed on the ball, kept it and passed it. Um, and that gives you a chance to rest with it. Um, in the second half, we didn't quite do that. It was waves of attack. Ball went up and didn't quite stick and it comes back. And, uh, and as I said, they're too good. And bringing on Mora and Kane and all these boys, it just shows their quality in the end. They did actually look quite vulnerable in the first half, didn't they? Yeah, listen, I think we, every team is when you're, when you're expansive on the attack, which they were, if we can hold possession and actually spring, then there's, there's chances you can have against them. I think uh, first half we did that, second half we just didn't. We never really got going. Uh, we never really, the changes didn't overly work for us as well um, in terms of fresh legs and bringing on some, some new kind of enthusiasm into the game but um, but as I said I can't fault them they've been fantastic uh, I was lucky enough to be able to lead them here today on behalf of the manager but they're a credit to themselves a credit to the club and, and I think um, if someone had said we'd led for 75 minutes we'd probably have taken that You're saying uh, when Spurs had to bring on Lucas Moura and Harry Kane to get into the game you know you've done some good things yeah, exactly. And again, I go back to it, the system. It's not, it's not blowing the trumpet of the manager, but the system and the tactics. The gaffers worked with them all week and, and put in place a plan that, that in, in theory, was very, very close to succeeding against one of the top teams, Champions League team and themselves. So, um, so that's, that's a credit to the manager. Shame he couldn't be here. He's our leader. He's the one who, who sets us up. So, um, but hopefully he's watched that and he's he listening. Like us, he'll be frustrated with errors. He'll be frustrated with goals conceded. But um, when the dust settles, we have to concentrate now on the big stuff, which is the league going forward. Is there a tinge of disappointment? You mentioned it there about the goals conceded and the way they were conceded. Always. Listen, every goal is a mistake. Every goal you can point, point towards individual errors, you can point towards collective errors, whatever it be. Um, I think some of them are controllable 100%, but they'll say the same about theirs. It's a corner for them. It's controllable. They let a runner go. Um, so it's one of them where did we deserve to maybe go and win the game on possession and shots? Probably not. So you know that the pressure is going to come. You know that you have to ride your luck. You have to be very, very lucky to keep a clean sheet somewhere like this. Um, so I'm, never, I'm not going to pick holes in the, in the goals. We'll look at them individually and ourselves, but um, there's no blame. The boys ran themselves into the ground and if they get tired with the last 15 minutes to go, I have to say it's understandable. On an individual level, Jacob Beddow came in. What a great way for him to make his debut. And how well did he do? I thought he was fantastic. I thought he was, honestly, I thought a special mention for him. I think there was loads. I think the, the back three in general were fantastic. Um, and I think he, he showed what he's all about. He's, uh, in, like we described him during the week, he steps in. He's comfortable on the ball. He's enthusiastic. And, and he came straight into a ground like this, only having trained with us for a few days and show what he's all about. Um, obviously, he's not played that many minutes at first-team football recently, so legs-wise, we always knew it might be a struggle. Um, but it was actually a shame that we had to bring him off. Um, great that we had a deputy in, in Gibbo to come on for him, but, um, but I thought he did fantastic. And great support, if you say, from 3,000 travelling fans. Yeah, it's fantastic to see them. Hopefully, they had a great time, where they came down to this morning on the early, bu on the early buses, or they came down yesterday and had a little bit of a party. Um, that's what you want, because you fear coming down here that... You maybe come down and get a bloody nose like some teams have done at big clubs. Um, but in fairness to the boys, they did the opposite. They gave them a day out. They gave them excitement. They gave them goals. Um, ultimately, disappointment because we go home without anything. But, um, but again, we have to be proud and hopefully they'll be proud of that performance. And finally, back to the league next week. Important to perhaps keep the good things from today into that performance next week. Yeah, listen, completely different animal what we're playing against. Um, Wimbledon are a, a massive threat, we know that. They're a bit more, obviously, a lot more direct than what we face today. Um, systems wise, tactics wise, we'll, we'll reassess and look at that again. We had joy with a certain system against Doncaster. We changed it today for the, um, the challenge that we face today. So um, good that we've Trevor in, good that we've got uh, Bedo in. They're obviously additions to our squad. Hopefully we can keep working on that. Um, and the good thing is the manager's out of isolation during the week, so he'll be back and, and able to work with the lads in the training ground and, and help us out as well. 
Did he keep in touch with the manager during the game at all, or did he just left him to it? No, he was listening. He was brilliant with me, and I spoke to him at length before the game. He just said, "Listen, I trust everything you're doing, and, and I'll back you in your decision making." Um, he was in touch with us um, as much as he could be, um, so he did have input in some of the stuff we did. Um, but ultimately, he, he trusted us to to make judgment calls based on what we saw. Uh, as I said, some of the changes potentially didn't work out for us in terms of um, having a huge impact, but. Um, but that is what it is. You always make these judgment calls, and it's uh, it's always a what if. If the gaffer was here, would he have done something different? Possibly. Um, but uh, from my point of view, the trust that he gave me to, to lead the team is something that I'll remember. <laughs>